The second element in our discussion of biochemistry of minerals is phosphorus. It is found in every cell of our body. Foods that are rich sources of phosphorus are milk, cereals, leafy vegetables, meat and eggs. Its biochemical functions are the development of bones and teeth in association with calcium. It has a central role in the formation of high energy phosphate compounds like ATP, GTP and creatinine phosphate. It is also required for the formation of phospholipids, phosphoproteins and nucleic acids DNA and RNA. It is an essential component of nucleotide coenzymes like NAD, NADP, pyridoxal phosphate, ADP and AMP. The process of phosphorylation is essential for activation of many proteins and enzymes. Lastly, the phosphate buffer system maintains the pH of blood as well as the cells. Now coming to its dietary requirements. The recommended dietary allowance of phosphate is based on the intake of calcium. The ratio of calcium to phosphorus of 1 ratio 1 is recommended for an adult. Majority of natural foods have the distribution of calcium and phosphorus in 1 ratio 1. Therefore, adequate intake of calcium takes care of phosphorus requirement also. For infants, the ratio of calcium to phosphorus is 2 ratio 1, which is based on the ratio found in human milk. Now coming to the absorption. Phosphate absorption occurs in the second part of small intestine that is jejunum. There are two factors that promote phosphate absorption and there are two factors that inhibit it. First promoting factor is calcitriol. Calcitriol enhances the synthesis of a binding protein which promotes phosphate uptake along with calcium in a ratio of 1 to 1. Low pH or acidic environment favors phosphate absorption. The factors that inhibit phosphate absorption are phytates which form insoluble salts with phosphate decreasing its uptake by intestinal cells. High pH or alkalinity also decrease its absorption. The phosphate levels of whole blood is around 40 mg per deciliter. A very high percentage of this phosphorus is found in red blood cells and white blood cells and if we remove them from the blood, the remaining serum contains only 3 to 4 mg per deciliter of phosphate. A very interesting point to note here is that the fasting serum phosphate levels are higher than the postprandial levels of phosphate. This is because of the fact that after a meal intake, large amounts of phosphate from serum is drawn by the cells for metabolism as phosphate is required in phosphorylation reactions as a component of coenzyme and for the formation of important compounds. Next we have the excretion of phosphate. The renal excretion and reabsorption of phosphate is influenced by parathyroid hormone. Parathyroid hormone favors the secretion of phosphate in renal tubules. Any disease causing hyperparathyroidism will eventually cause low serum phosphate levels while hypoparathyroidism leads to high serum phosphate levels.